thanks for talking to us about a uh, subject that's been um, annoying you for some time. No problem. Okay. Could, could you just start off by telling us a little bit about Ramiro Funes Mori? Because he is still quite an unknown quantity around Everton. All we know is that he can take a mean free kick and that's about it, really. Well, I think one interesting thing about him is that he's, uh, he's a twin. Um, identical twins. And uh, for a lot of his career, he's been in the shadow of his brother, okay. Rogelio, um, who was a much more glamorous player and a centre forward. Okay, yeah. Uh, and was always seen as, as the better of, of the two. Uh, and they, grew, they, they, they came through the ranks together at River Plate. Uh, and Rogelio, the brother, went to Benfica and didn't come off there and uh, is in Mexico at the moment, which may not be a good moment for what's yeah. going to happen to, uh, to Ramiro. Yeah, it could seem um, some of the worst, yeah. But there's no doubt that he has come on since the sale of his brother. So uh, it could be that, that psychologically he was he was a little bit in the in the shadow of his brother. I know you know any twins, but sometimes there's a there's a there's a strange relationship between them. So it, it could well be that, that one of the facts in his rise has been the fact that his, his brother is gone. His brother left River Plate because a couple of years ago, no one in Argentina saw this player as uh, as, as, a, as a potential star. You know, not even a. Um, Certainly not a, not a nearly ten million pound signing for, for for the Premier League, so um, that, that that could be a factor in in his rise. Um, the family, when Argentina's economy tanked in two thousand and one, the family relocated to Dallas, Texas. Yeah, which I think is very interesting um, because it does mean that he he speaks perfect English, which which is important. I think it's more important for a defender than it is for an attacker. Because yeah. defenders have have to operate collectively. Um, you've got to get on the same wavelength. So I think that, that that's an advantage that he that he has coming in. Um, his brother actually, when they were in Dallas, his brother won a kind of reality TV uh, type thing, scouting thing. The prize of which was a week's training with Chelsea, which is uh, it's a, a fair few years ago now. I think on for, for yeah. nearly a decade ago now, okay. um, and it, it was as a result of that that the pair of them got picked up by River Plate and moved moved back to, to Argentina. Where, as I say, his brother Rogelio was, uh, was the glamour same. boy yeah. project of a centre forward. And he was uh, he was initially more of a left back than a, than a, than a, than a centre back. Um, he's left footed which uh, and can play those two positions, which is uh, another point in his, in his favour. Um, and then the, the pair of them, as I say, developed through through River Plate. His brother always been the most glamorous of the two, uh, and it, it's after his brother moved that he seems to have, have, have developed a little bit, um, got into the first team on a regular basis, and, and became a, a a key player in the River Plate side, which has been very very successful over, over the last eighteen months or so. Yeah, I know you. Um, they won the the Copa Libertadores only last month, and that uh, that's like the equivalent of. South America's Champions League, if I'm correct. It is, yeah. 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 yeah, although um, I, have to, I have to tell you that the standard over there now, um, South American club football has never been worse. The national oh, really? team football is very strong. It's never been stronger. The club football is, uh, is, is it's really poor. Well, and Maxi Rodriguez, you know, he was away for a decade in Spain and then with Liverpool. And when he went back, uh, he, he couldn't believe how, how much... Um, the, the standard in Argentina would decline. Um, so we are talking about domestic football, which 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 has been gutted, really. Yeah. You know, they're, they're they're losing players now, not only to Europe, you know, to the Middle East. And Lanzini left River Plate and went to went to Al Jazeera and said it was a step up. You know, and has now come to West Ham. He said it was a step up to go to Al Jazeera, but they're losing players to the MLS. Um, uh, and the MLS is a real worry, I think, for, for South American football because the MLS looks to be on course to being the best league in the Americas. You know, it's not there yet, but no. it, it, it's, it, it's looking that way. So um, the, the, the domestic standard in South America now is poor. And if you compare the River Plate team, which won this year's Libertadores, if you compare it with the one that won the Libertadores uh, the, last, the previous time, 1996, there is absolutely no comparison. 
Yeah. It's, it, it, it's enough to make you weak looking at the looking at the comparison between the two sides. So that '96 side could really play. You don't actually have uh, high hopes of Funes Mori being a success in the Premier League. Um, just, just exactly why is this? Because this is what this is the crux of why Evertonians are are so angry about uh, angry at you on Twitter. Uh, well, yeah. First of all, I'm I'm quite surprised at, uh, at the reaction. Um, I've always loved Everton. Actually, I've, I've got a, I've got a soft spot for those kind of academy clubs. You know, yeah, those yeah. clubs with that kind of thing about them. And, and, and uh, loads of Everton fans have been telling me that you know you're really down at the moment and so on. I don't really understand why. No, I don't quite understand where the negativity about Everton at the moment is coming from. And I'm a Tottenham fan, and I think we've got more reasons to be to be negative than um, than, than you have. And, our, our atmosphere doesn't seem to be like as negative as the atmosphere at Everton. I don't really understand it. Um, although we did outplay you, and, and, and we, we, we should have, should have hammered you the other week. Yeah. But there you go. Tim um, Howard actually played well for once, which is. He did, yeah, he did. Although well, Everton nearly snatched it at the end. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you, 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 you kept stones for Alan Ross Barkley, although he had a poor game that day, um, is, is a little jewel. And I, I, I don't. I don't quite understand why why the atmosphere is, is so negative, and I've been I've been disappointed, to be honest, with um, with the reaction of of, 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 of the Everton fans. You know, I just had the idea of a uh, you know, the, 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 the more well, it's only it's only my opinion. You know, I'm paid to give them, yeah. uh, and uh, as, as, I, as I always always say, I am very very aware of the insignificance of, of my own opinion. Yeah. Um, but I've seen a lot of Funes Mori over the years, so it is a qualified opinion. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it's a point that I have to keep coming back to. But you know, I had a Premier League manager telling me, ask, asking me whether, whether he should sign Mario Bocelli, and I said, don't go anywhere near it. Don't even think about it. If you, if you dream about signing Mario Bocelli, you should wake up and apologise. <laughs> and, and, uh, and Martinez signed him a week, and then effectively relegated him because uh, you know it was a record signing. He didn't he score any goals. Goal. Premier League goals. I think he scored and, one in the uh, Carlin Cup. Or Sorry, can you start again? I think he scored. Um, I think he scored a penalty in the in the League Cup. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And, and you know, if you're a club like Wigan, you can't afford to make a mistake like that with your record signing. So no. um, all these Everton fans screaming at me, you were wrong about Paulinho. You know, if you were, if you apply the same logic to uh, to your coach, you wouldn't let him lose for the twenty three piece. So yeah. it, it's a it's a surprise to me that he's decided to go back to. Uh, to the Argentine league to bring bring a player in, especially especially in this position, position of centre back. I think it was I think David Moyes said when he was at United that he thought centre back was the most difficult position to play these days in the Premier League, mm. and uh, it could well be that my pessimism about Funes Mori is a little bit because I, I was I was scarred um, back in nineteen ninety nine two thousand when I said that Raphael Scheidt would be a good piece of business for Celtic, and he ended up being an absolute disaster. He had, he had, he had some bad luck, he had, had illness and injuries and so on. Yeah. But what, what I'd forgotten at the time, at the time you, you got very, very little access to British football on, on, on TV over there, what I'd forgotten is that the position of centre-back is so, so different. You know, in, in, in South America, um, they'll tend to play deep, uh, and... Um, the, uh, the pace of the game is much, much less. The quality of the game is, these days, much, much less. So, Raphael Scheidt, who was in the Brazil side, uh, had done well in, in domestic Brazilian football, done very well, in fact. The virtues that had helped him to do that were to help at Celtic when he was being asked to do to do different things. Uh, and, and maybe because I got that one so catastrophically wrong, perhaps I've been, I've been overly cautious with Centre backs coming in straight from South America ever since. Although, having said that, I think if you look at my record, I've been pretty much uh, spot on. Um, Paletta at Liverpool, I said, look, this is a good player, but he's coming too soon and he's been thrown in the deep end. Uh, he was a dismal failure at Liverpool, went back to Argentina, then went, went back to Italy, went, went to Italy, and has done so well subsequently yeah. that he got into the, to the Italy side. He, so I was right like to see him as a good player, and, but, and, but, but also right to see that it was, it was too soon. Um, Virginia at Sunderland, who uh, you know, I, I said no way, and you know he subsequently 
um, been kicked out of the Spain and already been sent off in, in his first couple of weeks in, in, in Spanish league football. Fazio, I know he didn't come in straight from, from Argentina, he came in from Spain. But I didn't see him at all. And I think I've been proved right on, on that one. We, uh, we had a player called Bruno Vini, a top of um, fans. You know, my own team were giving me stick when Tottenham had him on loan, and I said, not a hope. Mm. Um, but he wasn't even good enough for, for Tottenham's reserves. So, and Tottenham made changes in their scouting department after, after, after that disaster. So, um, it, it, it could well be that I'm, I'm pessimistic on Funes Mori uh, because I've seen so many South American centre backs come in and, and find, it, find it too much. Ultimately, he's done well in Spain. Yeah, um, he's he, done very he, has, well. he has had really effectively one good season in Europe because he didn't do, didn't do great with, with, with Porto beforehand. Uh, and I'm not sure he's the quickest, but he's a good centre back. He's certainly mm. a better centre back than, than Funes Mori, which is one of the reasons that he cost three times more. Well, on the subject of um, and costing, Funes Mori did cost £9.5 million. Pounds, and I think that makes him Everton's fifth most expensive ever player like in their history. Um, do you think he'll ever live up to that price tag, or is he is he just not a nine point five million pound player at all? Well, the fee is very strange, isn't it? Given the fact that it was it was five point five two weeks ago. Yeah, uh, I'm, 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 uh, no one knows what happened. There. It's really really strange. So you know that that's, uh, so it's it's a lot of money to pay. And the other one you bring in, Leandro Rodriguez, I think is a gamble, and anything you get from him is is a bonus because because of the size of the transfer fee. Yeah. So, uh, I think that that's, that's a gamble, and I'll be surprised if it comes off. Or no, I don't think it's bad. No, but it's it's, it's a gamble that's quite maybe worth taking when you're paying nine and a half. But that, that takes it up to a, to a different bracket, I think. Um, so yes, I'm, I'm I'm surprised by the transfer fee. If if you think he has any, what uh, what strengths does Funes Mori possess? Oh no, he does have strengths. I mean, the, the versatility to, to play at, at centre back and left back, and I think there is a strong personality here. I think this is the aspect of him which has blossomed um, since uh, since the time of his brother. Maybe yeah. psychologically, you know, he, he stops being. The, uh, the, the, the the least talented of the two brothers when when, when his brother moved uh, left River Plate, so the, 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 there are signs of a leader there. I mean, that, that's the thing I think which has uh, has made him so beloved of River Plate fans over these uh, over these, these these last eighteen months or so. So there, there, there are there are virtues there, um, but I, I doubt whether they're virtues which are. Uh, which are uh, good enough to, to pay that amount of money for? What about like I don't know with the ball at his feet, uh, or has he got pace? Is he is he strong in the air? Is there what about like the more technical qualities of his game? Well, my, my worry about him is the number of times I've seen him give the ball away close to goal. Okay. Um, and there was one, and if, if you if you can get access to the to the final of the Libertadores, the second leg, it's nil nil, uh, and uh, he drops an absolute brick on the edge of his penalty area. Um, the kind of mistake that in the Premier League is a goal. Yeah. Um, he got away with it. He won't get away with that kind of ricket. Now I've seen games where where and he has led the uh, the statistics for misplaced passes. So I don't think he's sufficiently precise with his passing. Um, I've seen him give away goals with bad back passes and so on. And uh, I think he, he makes mistakes in a position where if you make him in the Premier League, you're likely to give a goal away. Um, so uh, I fear that he'll, he'll struggle there especially with the extra pace and the more condensed play of the Premier League where you've got less less time on the ball. So that, 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 that's a worry for me, whether his passing is going gonna, is gonna to give away goals. I, I don't think he's the quickest. And I well remember a game, um, I remember one of the, the, the Libertadores against Tigres in Mexico. And they also played him in a group phase. In the group phase, at the home game back in March, Tigres uh, um, had, had a quick, quick striker, the Ecuadorian, get on. He was quick. And, and Funes Mori couldn't get close to him to throw sand at his backside. Uh, and, and that would be a worry. In mm. fact, the, the best thing that happened to River Plate in that game was Funes Mori got an injury and went off in the, in the first half. And a quicker centre back came on, and, and, and that was the end of the problem. So that, 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 that would worry me. You know, you, you, you put him against. 
the pace of strikers that you've got in, in the Premier League. I'm, I'm not convinced that he'll, he'll cope with that. Also, he's not the biggest physically. I mean, um, so, uh, this, this kind of strong leader type figure, strong personality type thing, could rebound on him in the Premier League because uh, one of the ways that he's, 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 he's shown that in Argentina is, uh, is house. You know, the, the, the kind of foul when he imposed himself on the central centre forward going straight through the back of him. Mm. You worry if, uh, if uh, this will make him pick up cards in the Premier League. Going back to the pace thing, Everton Everton do tend to play with quite a high line and we saw that against Tottenham when um, Ryan Mason did a did a clever through ball yeah. to Harry Kane yeah, and Harry then Kane. he had the whole he had the, pretty much the whole of Everton's half to run into. Uh, I've got one one more question before I let you go. Thank you for uh, talking to us today. My pleasure. Um, who would you rather have, Anselin Alcaraz or Ramiro Funes Mori, and why? Well, I don't think Alcaraz is. A, it depends on how you set up your team. Like you're talking about high line. Yeah. And Alcaraz, I don't think he's good for that, is he? No, not, um, not, not at all. No. But what I've seen from Everton fans, uh, no, he has to come off there. But I, I, you have to remember that he was a key part of the best World Cup qualification campaign in Paraguay's history, where they gave Spain, in, in that run of, of, of three tournaments that Spain won, the hardest knockout game that they played was probably against Paraguay. So he has got something to it, you know. Yeah. So, um, it, it, you know, it looks to me, again, on the evidence that, that you're talking about, that I saw against Tottenham with that high line, you wouldn't want to play Alcaraz there no. and, and maybe in in that system on Sunday's morning we'll, we'll be we'll be better than our Al- 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 for, for that system but um, let's let's see, show some respect for Alcaraz for what he did in the World Cup because um, the level of play in, in the World Cup is all right it's not the Champions League but it's much 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 higher than what Sunday's morning has done in, yeah. in the Libertadores well yeah uh, oh sorry one more um just you touched on him earlier, uh, Leandro Rodriguez. Uh, he's if Ramiro Funes Mori is an unknown quantity, then Leandro Rodriguez is a whole beyond and above the status of unknown quantity. Um, is could you give us any insight on on Rodriguez? Is he quick? Does he is he he's, uh, he said himself he was a technical player, but we I've never seen him before in my life yet again. Yeah, well. I haven't seen a lot of him over the last two years. There was a period a couple of years back when I was watching that club a lot, River Plate. Yeah. A bit tiny River Plate. It's not the River Plate in Argentina. The Uruguay and River Plate are really, really small. Um, and I was watching him a lot because uh, they had a player, a uh, young left back, he's younger than, than Rodriguez, a guy called Lucas Olaza, yeah. who uh, they nearly won the Uruguay title for, their, for the first time. Um, and Olaza from left back at the age of 20, was their top goal scorer. It's a beautiful left foot. So that was a player I was watching. Hmm. Every opportunity I, I got, I was watching him. Yeah. And um, subsequently, he then went to Brazil, where he couldn't get a game. Olaza. And he's now with Celta Vigo's B team. Okay. Now that tells you a little bit about yeah. the Uruguayan league. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I saw that Mart- Martinez said that, uh, that we had R- Rodriguez, who then was a substitute. He was getting on, but it was it, it was more off the bench. So I've seen very little of him. Okay. Um, but he, he, he's, he's a he, he's a stocky, quick kind of striker. He, he's, he's not a target man. They, they had a target man they were called Avanati, big left-footed target man, who's gone to the, the, the Italian second division where he's done pretty well. But what Martinez said that with the Andrew Rodriguez, that his experience in Uruguay will stand him in good stead at Everton because it's a really competitive league. Now that's, that's absolute cloud cookie land. It's nonsense talk. Um, and he, the last time a Uruguayan club won the Libertadores was in 1988. They've only, got, they've only, only once since then as the Uruguayan team got to the final. And only twice, I think, have they reached the semi-final. So Uruguay has a population of 3 million. And in a globalised era, they just can't hold on to their best players. So the, the domestic league is promising youngsters and veterans with no one any good in the middle. Because, you know, anyone any good in the middle has, has been sold. It's gone, yeah. Um, and Uruguay's recent resurgence at national team level has explicitly been based on that realisation. You know, Oscar, the, the coach, Tabarez, has said, look, you know, before I took the job, I just thought about globalisation and what it's done to our football um, and, and how 
he is good in Uruguayan domestic football is no longer uh, good enough to be good in the national team. So um, when I saw Martinez say this, I, I, that, that worried me a little bit because if he really thinks that, then that, 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 I don't think that's a realistic basis to, to, to judge the player. There looks to be something there. It's a huge, huge step up for him. And, and uh, anything you get from him, I think, is a bonus. But at that price, I think it's probably a gamble worth taking. Yeah, uh, the fee was around £500,000, so it, it isn't the end of the world if it, it doesn't come off. But obviously, we'd, we'd, we'd love it to happen. And, and you'll probably be able to send, it, send him on for a profit, maybe. Yeah. yeah. You know, even, if it, even if it doesn't work. So uh, I think that, that, that's a gamble worth taking. Okay. Uh, Tim, thank you very much for your time. Hopefully, um, Evertonians can see and uh, change their opinion about about you and hopefully they won't be paying well, for your blood well, no, but you know there you go it's, it's, it's part of the game so you just have to you have to grin and bear it